I grew up Democrat. My family was Democrats. My mom uh, grew up Democrat. My dad, he's a minority. So, you know, that's just who we were supposed to be. Um, anyhow, uh, I hear my husband coming up the road. It's like two miles away, but I can hear his motorcycle. So anyhow, uh, my dad's a minority. That's where I left off. So he's a minority and um, that's just the way, you know, we believe. The way everybody I think is taught who has had a democratic history, you believe that they're for the little people, they're for the working class, um, and, and the Republicans are the rich white elitists who really don't care. Um, so my first moment, my meander, I didn't really walk away. It was, it was a big journey. It was very slow process. Um, 2001 happened. Uh, my brother had just joined the military that summer, so I was very scared for him. I was very uh, scared for our nation. Um, I started really paying attention then and, re and, and just, I felt it very important to become uh, supportive and, and involved, involved uh, with what was going on. But I did have a lot of kids and a lot of responsibilities, so I really wasn't as involved as I should be. But I did start reading a lot of history around that time. Um, my first real uh, clash with the Democratic Party, real clash, came when uh, my husband and I tried to start our own business. <coughs> There's a lot of startup costs, a lot of, um, uh, not a lot of profit right at first, right? You're trying to build. So... Uh, things were tough. We didn't have insurance because we weren't working, you know, at our at a, a regular job that provided insurance, um, consistent, steady paycheck. So there were, came a point where my husband looked at me and said, you know, I think we're going to have to get on, on welfare for a little while. The kids need insurance. Um, you know, we need a little help. So I went down and applied. I went down and applied, and this was my first real moment. My caseworker, the lady who looked over all my paperwork when I finally got called in, um, looked at it uh, and said, um, so you're married? And uh, I was like, yes, ma'am, I'm married. And she asked me if I was happy. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, what kind of question is that? Most of the time, uh, of course, you know, nobody's perfect. We have our issues, but yeah, we're happily married. And she goes, well, you know, if you weren't married, if you were a single mother, you guys would make a whole lot more benefits. And I was like, what? But I, I'm married. I love my husband. And she's like, well, wait, it's not like we go in and check your homes. We're not going to check to see who's living there. You're just divorced on paper. And I mean, these things were literally spoken. And I remember sitting there thinking just, wow, wow. And I didn't even realize how important what she was saying was at the time. I was just kind of blown away for myself, you know, like I'm supposed to get divorced to make more food stamps. Really? Um, and one of the things that stuck out to me and, and why uh, it was a, a move away from the Democratic side was um, she had had a John Kerry sticker on one of her notebooks on the desk. And it was somebody I was going to vote for, too. So it was a similarity that I'd seen between me and her. And then this, these things were said. And, yeah, I was a little upset about them. So anyhow... Um, That happened. I went home and told my husband, and he was like, "Wow, you know, we discussed it. Hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, we were. It became a big moment later when we realized how important that was. Um, the next moment came four or five months later when things were better. I mean, we weren't millionaires, but we were in a better spot. We were making our bills, paying. You know, uh, we were more secure. We had uh, bought insurance for ourselves." Um, and my husband and I discussed and decided it was time to close our, uh, uh, account. That's not the word, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, close out our benefits. And, um, I went down to do that and the lady was blown away. She was like, why, why are you doing this? And I'm like, because we don't need it anymore. And then she was like, um, well, you do know you have a, a Tilly, you can have this for a year before you have to renew. And having that extra money, uh, at least for a year, will just help. It'll make things easier. And I'm like, but we don't need it. 
And she said, specifically, she said, but it's free. And I'm not, I'm not a genius. I'm not somebody who knows a lot about really anything. Um, but even in my youth and naivety at that time, I, I was like, this is not free money. These are, this is money that the taxpayers have paid in to help people who need it. I needed help. I don't need it anymore. And um, she was like, well, I've never in my 30 some years of working in this department have ever had anybody come in and close their benefits before it was time. I was like, well, now you have, <laughs> you know? Um, later, it ended up being a five. It took me actually three months because every time I the, the month would renew, I'd check to see if it was closed and it wasn't. I had to call. I had to call, I had to go down there again. It was ridiculous. Um, that was another moment for me. Then um, Barack happened. Uh, and um, when Barack happened, he, a lot of people jumped on that train. I was excited to see uh, a black man running for the presidency. I really thought, oh my gosh, this is really cool. Um, yeah, Hillary was running too. I've never liked Hillary. I grew up on the East Coast, but I've lived in Arkansas and the Oklahoma area since I was in my young teens. Um, and I was really excited until he got to talking. And when he got to talking, I mean, he was so charming. He was, he was so charming. But, and this is gonna sound so stupid, but I could not vote for Barack because Barack reminded me of my ex-boyfriend. His mannerisms, his, um, his way of speaking, his facial expressions, his smirk. I did not vote for Barack Obama, not because he was black, but because he reminded me of my ex who was a snake charmer. He was somebody that you would want to believe. He was so charming, but he was so fake and such a liar. And so, and that's why I didn't vote for him. Not because he was black, um, but because he reminded me of Michael Todd. <laughs> so anyhow, um, so I didn't vote for him. And um, at that time though still, I've never felt like I had to be quiet or hide what I felt, um, who I voted for. And I was still, like I said, I was still kind of democratic, but I was learning. I was reading, I was getting really involved with the things started happening during his administration and Fast and Furious and Benghazi and the Affordable Care Act and all the executive orders. It was just, I really started paying attention. Um, and then Trump happened and I thought that was a joke. I was initially a never Trumper. This was not serious. The, the, this guy's personality is just, oh. And then, um, uh, but we had a lot to choose from then. You had Cruz and Ben Carson. I, I, was, I really liked Ben Carson. Um, I liked Rubio. I liked, I liked Cruz. Didn't like Trump. Um, wasn't gonna vote for Hillary. Uh, had learned enough researching. I wasn't gonna vote. <laughs> For Bernie, I, I'm not voting for socialism, even if you throw the word democratic in front of it. Um, so, but we had a lot to choose from until Trump won the Republican ticket. And I was like, oh my lord, this can't be happening. Um, I eventually just got really quiet. You know, um, I could see people starting to freak out, see it going wild, see people getting very, very, very <clears throat> bizarre. And, um, but I wasn't going to vote for Hillary ever, ever, ever. She's just a, a corrupt, lying, she's just all kinds of wrong. And I know as a woman that makes, means, I voted against my womanhood or whatever, but um, uh, Hillary was just evil, evil. And I wasn't gonna vote for her. So when I got in that booth, I kinda had to plug my nose 
in Boat Quick Trunk. And honestly, I didn't think he was going to win. Of course, that's what the polls told us. But then lo and behold, he did win. And then the whole world went crazy. It went insane. And I went from feeling like I could discuss my opinions and my thoughts. And I had some really, really good debates with people. Um, people have changed my mind when I've seen different things along the way, one way or the other. I can't do that anymore. Um, on my Facebook page, I pretty much, until this campaign happened, had not said anything. I've been afraid. Um, I live in Oklahoma. See, this Oklahoma behind me. See, that's my yard. And, um, and our business is right over the state line in Arkansas. And believe it or not, I know most people may think we're all redneck hillbillies, but our area is extremely diverse. Um, I've always uh, looked at a person as a person. That's just who I am. I've never bought into that victim narrative that you had, that you were somehow oppressed. You're as oppressed as you allow yourself to be. You are um, as unequal, not equal to somebody else as you allow yourself to be. I've always looked and thought and I don't know why some people want to think that they aren't as valuable or worthy. But I've never believed that a black person was less than a white person or a Hispanic person was less than a white person. Never. They're just as valuable and, and, and worthy and capable and talented as an, and intelligent as anybody else. And that's why I moved to conservatism. A lot of people believe on the left believe that that's what the liberal platform was and that, that's what they told everybody it was it's, it wasn't <laughs> that's the conservative platform equal opportunities for all um, the uh, uh, they fight for the individual they believe in a secure country and a stable economy and yes we do have some Republicans on our side who are extreme who, have, who are anti-American, in my opinion, which is why I don't actually say I'm a Republican. I'm a conservative. Um, and we have our own issues, too. But in the conservative platform, I think you guys are beginning to find out. But I found out a couple of years ago, anyways, that they are the most welcoming and inclusive and diverse in real freedom, in real individuality. Um, they want you with them, um, even if you don't agree. Uh, it's a lot more tolerant and respectful in real ways. So um, that's why I walked away. And I encourage you to, too, to as well. <laughs> Sorry. Um, just walk away from the hate from the violence, from the vitriol, um, where you end up walking to is, it, that's your choice. You don't have to become a Republican. You can become whatever you want. It's your journey. We're just here to support you and encourage you along the way and to walk with you. <laughs>